guys my name is Vuvu and this is Vuvu Venerid welcome back to my channel if you are a regular an oldie but goodie somebody who is part of the family thank you so very much for popping in and stopping by I really appreciate it and if you are new on here please consider joining the Vuvu Venerid family we would really love to have you here we are going right into this haul I should not be having hauls on my channel especially not right now but here we go and on that note guys now it's monday and the president did the thing so cheers so Bubu Vena, on the score reads is an amazing book reviewer also youtuber she reviews books on youtube and if i'm not mistaken she also has a blog as well so please if for your connection with literature get in touch with or follow at v-u-v-u-v-e-n-a underscore reads she is based in South Africa and I think it is also extremely important to follow literary content creators who are based outside of who are based outside of the West and in continental Africa because they do a really good job of bridging the gap. We appreciate you Vuvu for bringing us turning pages and for bringing us your booktube channel. You know, this is a chance for people to actually see some people that i really enjoy please consider pressing the red subscribe button down below and if you are returning welcome back fam vuvu you're amazing thank you so much for your time okay without being silly and without doing too much so at some point i didn't um share with you guys the secondhand books that I got um, at some point during the year and I thought I'd share those with you and as well as some of the books that I recently hold or got it's not a lot of books it's about um, okay it's about nine books in total okay so I let me start with the secondhand books that I'm referring to and then I'll get into the other books uh, we'll read the back of the books for you guys because I felt like my last haul that I did didn't really add any value to you guys because you did not know what the storyline of the books that I was showing you was and the point of me sharing books with you guys that have interested me is to pique your interest in case they interest you as well so anytime that you see me doing that because sometimes it slips my mind just comment on the video and I'll be happy to do another video of those books and probably remove the last video so that you guys can also be aware of the kind of books that I'm talking about and whether or not you'd be interested. I mainly buy fiction so you guys must know that whatever I haul majority of the time like 99% of the time will be fiction. Here and there I will get some non-fiction especially if it comes highly recommended or highly acclaimed. I will pick it up especially if it's a memoir that's the kind of fiction a non-fiction sorry that I enjoy. However let me not ramble straight into these books. So the one book that I did pick up oh I didn't realize that the cover is like this. Hmm this is the bag. And this is the front would you even imagine okay so it's the test what? yes the testaments i thought i was saying the wrong thing the testaments by margaret edward if you are following um the handmaid's tale on show max <laughs> you realize that 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 is based on a book by margaret edward i did finish the book beginning of this year i struggled with it all of last year but beginning of this year i finally finished it so this is kind of like the sequel to the book that came a whole many years later because i think that the first book the handmaid's tale was written in the 80s and i think this one just came out recently after that uh specific um series started becoming popular so this one is uh published in 2019 i just want to see if they will tell you anything about the actual book okay i don't know if this is the synopsis or not that's why i'm stuck on this because i see that the leaf of the dust jacket does talk to the author but i don't see it talking about the book so if i do not have a synopsis for you guys i do apologize but i will read what is there for me to be able to read to you guys and hope that it talks to the book and not just general uh, margaret edwards work okay and as far as i understand i want to say she's not she's what she's canadian but i don't know so the the inside leaf says our time together is about to begin my reader Possibly you will view these pages of mine as a fragile treasure box to be opened with the utmost care. 
possibly you will tear them apart or burn them that often happens with words you told you hold in your hands a dangerous weapon loaded with the secrets of three women from gilead they are risking their lives for you for all of us before you enter their world you might want to arm yourself with these thoughts knowledge is power and history does not repeat itself but it rhymes so that's all she's letting in on this and like i'm saying it's building off the world of gilead that we've already come to know and it's the latest um installment in 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 the continuity of that story that started with a handmaid's tale and as far as i understand she goes on a certain path with this one i don't want to spoil it with you guys i mean sorry for you guys however i do not think that the series currently the season that we're on currently is following um the the testaments i think it went on its own tangent because of what i've i've watched but i've only managed to watch like four episodes i think but it does not go down this path as far as i understand what this is about if you want to know about it then you'll search it but i don't want to spoil it for you guys so that's the first book the testaments by, Ma by margaret atwood and then i've got my first zady smith book so this was also second hand that was second hand this was also second hand zady smith's northwest and we we might not all know but we might all know that Zadie Smith comes very highly acclaimed. I will read you a bit about the author. Um, but that's what she looks like over there. I'll read you a bit about the author. But first I'll tell you what the book is about. This one is called Northwest. And this is the story of a city. The northwest corner of a city. Here you'll find guests and hosts. Those with power and those without it. People who live somewhere spatial some were special and others who live nowhere at all and many people in between every city is like this cheeky by jo joel living separate worlds and then there are the visitations the rare times a stranger crosses a threshold without permission or warning causing a disruption in the whole system like the april afternoon a woman came to lee hanwell's door seeking help disturbing the peace forcing lee out of her isolation zadie smith's brilliant tragic comic new novel follows four londoners lee natalie felix and nathan as they try to make adult lives outside Cal caldwell the council estate of their childhood from private houses to public parks at work and at play the Lon their london is a complicated place as beautiful as it is brutal where the thoroughfares hide the back alleys is where the thoroughfares hide the back alleys and taking the high road can sometimes lead you to a dead end depicting the modern urban zone familiar to town dwellers everywhere zadie smith's northwest is quite quietly devast is a quietly devastating novel of encounters mercurians and vital like the city itself now um zadie smith was born in northwest london in 1975 she is the author of the novels white teeth the auto no the autograph man and on beauty and of a collection of essays changing my mind she is also the editor of the book of other people i've heard about white teeth and that one also comes very highly acclaimed so that's my first lady smith book which i'm excited about second hand like i say and then the last second hand book that i picked up is really for my kids is the good night stories for rebel girls by elena favilli and francesca cavolo by the by those of you who do follow me over on tiktok my handle there is vuvu vena underscore reads like everywhere twitter instagram if you're looking for me that's what you need to search i did share these books with you guys a few weeks ago on on um tiktok which is actually where i also share books that i receive from publishers most of them are shared on my tiktok account anyway so this one follows about a hundred extraordinary women a hmm? hundred tales of extraordinary women so on the cover they cite coco chanel jane austen um Loz Lozen elizabeth the first serena williams mary curie 
and the back says a must have for the nightstand of every girl or young woman you know and i'm saying even for every boy or young man you know i i really don't feel like books should ever be gendered and i don't believe that these stories don't translate or don't have meaning um to young boys so this like i'm saying is for my children and if you know or if you don't know i've got a boy and a girl very young though so i've kept this in a very sacred space so that when i do start telling them these stories they do understand what it's about so good night stories for rebel girls reinvents fairy tales inspiring children with the stories of a hundred heroic women from elizabeth the Fa what? from elizabeth the first to serena williams illustrated by 60 female artists from every corner of the globe this is the most funded original book in the history of crowdfunding I absolutely love the idea of this book like I'm saying I have not um, yet opened it for my kids I am waiting for the right time it is not the kind of book that I want them to tear because they paddle between that phase of their lives to actually taking books seriously so right now I am very protective over this book but I just want to show you one page so this is the Coco Chanel page that's the illustration obviously and then that's what the page looks like and like it says there are a hundred of these um fantastic women in this collection um that's it for the second hand bit of the collection however a friend of mine shout out to simole did gift me the broken river tent this one is published by blackbird books um a local publisher in south africa and it's a novel by Mputumi Ndabeni. And I've been wanting to get into his works. I realized that he's got a new book out. And I, for the life of me, I cannot think of the name. So if you know the name of the new book, please do um, share it in the comments down below. But I have been eyeing this for a while. And um, Simole did gift this one to me. So the back of this one says, When James Baldwin said that the responsibility of the writer is to excavate the experience of the people who produced him, he was, he may as well have spoken the Broken River Tent into existence. Mputu Mindabeni has written a stellar novel on the epic struggle for land between the Tosas and the British in the 19th century. It is seen through the eyes of a contemporary pillar who pillar is not pillar the name of the person is pillar which in Tosa means live yeah it means live in Tosa who minds the mind of mag magoma now i i got myself into a bind i am Tosa my Tosa is not the best so i don't know what magoma means but this is another character name okay who minds the mind of magoma the chief of the center of Tosa resistance then from their engagements in from their engagements is born a unique chronicle that interrogates history through current events where Ubukaba, the rawness of Kosa culture um confronts western civilization and where christian and african religions collide in strength and exposure of their weaknesses the story transverses the eastern cape picking up fortitude or for Chu what picking up fortuitous fortuitous wow characters setting them aside to move the storyline of Manoma Magoma Magoma's life on while following the fortunes of Pillar. It it delineates lively vin vignettes of social and domestic lives, friendships and rivalries. Altogether, it adds to the kaleidoscopic view of South African lives, past and present. The verbally fresh narrative is a carry on from Tosa oral culture, depicts depths of observation, and provides the much needed voices of those who were there in Magoma's time rather than just imagined facts. It is also an initiation into the uncanny clairvoyance of Tosa culture and worldview wow the choice of words in this um in this little synopsis requires a drink eh? like honestly i i felt my time falling off there but Mputu Mintabeni contributes to various national and international publications and writes a column for the southern cross the catholic weekly newspaper he has 
Well, sorry, excuse my kids. Buka Iana! Iana! I'm recording, baby. He has worked with the Rhodes University Drama Department to stage a play he wrote about Magoma. His work has been published in historical journals and magazines. Dabeni was also one of the six writers from the African continent included in the collection of short stories Africa Fresh, New Voices from the First Continent that was published in the United States. The Broken River Tent is his debut novel. And like I'm saying, his sophomore is now out. I have forgotten the name. Do forgive me. But I'm sure if you search for him or if somebody in the comment section does remember or maybe that somebody might be me, I will let you guys know in the comment section what the second book is called. So I am going to enter into the other world of books that I recently purchased. And like I'm saying, don't at me. Let's not talk about anything of any sort about book buying bands etc but i've been very good if i might add and that's all the commentary on that topic okay thanks so the first book would be go tell the sun this was uh featured in my recent um reading vlog this is the book club pick for july for the azania book club and this one was bought from the author um i understand that she is it is out of print currently because we brought bought the last batch however she is um currently reprinting from what i understand and this one is a as a botswana author like i said i think it's clear that um putumi is a south african author um okay so this is a Botswana author called Wame M. Molefe and this is a collection of short stories called Go Tell the Sun. And the back reads, Wame Molefe started writing short stories in 2005. In 2008, she left the, her full-time job to write. She freelances for a number of publications and also writes for TV. Just once, her children's collection of short stories was published in 2009. Go Tell the Sun is her second short story collection. And obviously this one is for grown-ups in case that wasn't clear. Wame Molefe's stories have a gentle, unassuming, yet intimate and captivating feel to them. Set in Botswana, the stories trace the lives of characters whose paths cross and recross each time. Sometimes in and, in and through love, at other times through tragedy. The social content and views are never proclaimed as a loud agenda. Instead, it forms a natural backdrop to the lives of the characters, something that may raise a wry comment or thought in one character while eliciting a mere shrug from another. Malefi's voice is, to some extent, a world-weary voice, weary of all she has seen of society's failures, but never without the gentleness, often absent and much needed in broken societies, and never without the hope and redemption that can be found in love and the imagination. This is a quote by Rustem Kozian. Angmas, Angmas, if you guys know who he is or who she is, you guys will let us know. But it sums up the, 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 the stories that are on here. I will probably do a review of this one on my blog or on here. I don't know yet, but I will. we are having our discussion this coming weekend, so can't wait to talk about that. This one was very easy to read, in case you are wondering. It's 119 pages long, and it's a breeze. It's a one set less than a day, like less than 12, less than even six hours is a lot. Sit down to read and finish this one, okay? Cool. So then the other books that I got, I got um, Black Sunday, um by tola rotimi abraham and this one was retailing for 80 bucks at bargain books like i said before i don't really go into bookstores for reasons previously stated in my previous haul but my girl simole picked this one up for me and i am ever so grateful sorry can i just mute let me just mute this phone I'm ever so grateful for that. So this I've been eyeing for a while. This is Black Sunday, like I said. Uh, it says it's a mesmerizing, simultaneously unique and universal novel. This is what NPR states about this. Twin sisters Bibike and Arike are enjoying a comfortable life in Lagos in 1996. Another Nigerian novel. 
I, I'm sorry, like, I don't, I don't think that there will ever come a point in my life where Nigerian novels don't do the trick for me. Like, I'm, I'm just putting that out there for you guys. And if you guys are looking for delectable, like, mouth-watering storytelling, do double with your Nigerian authors, okay? Okay. You heard it here first. Mm -hmm. Then their mother loses her job due to political strife and their father gambles away their home and the siblings are thrust into the reluctant care of their traditional Yoruba grandmother. Inseparable while they have inseparable while they had their parents to care for them, the twins paths diverge once the household shatters. One embracing modernity as the years pass, the other consumed by religion. Written with astonishing intimacy and wry attention to the fickleness of fate, Black Sunday delves into the chaotic heart of family life. In the process, it tells a, story, a tale of grace in the midst of daily oppression and of how two women carve their own distinct paths of resistance. I love the premise already. Love, 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 love. And then let's stick with Nigeria, right? I picked up Fresh Water after reading The Death of Vivek Oje, which I absolutely loved. That copy of Vivek was sent to me by Jonathan Ball Publishers. This one I bought myself. And just to plug you, a friend of mine, Bongani Dao, I want to tell you what his Instagram handle is. I'll, I'll put it on the screen, okay? So Bongani is, um, is a, an independent book seller. So if you guys are looking for any books, I think if you can support um, independent book sellers instead of going to like your traditional bookstores around South Africa, do hit him up on Instagram and let him know what you're looking for. I'm sure he can source what he can. And if he can't, he'll definitely let you guys know that he can't get it. So this one and the next book that I'll share with you guys, I got from him. And this is Fresh Water by, um, I almost said by Vivek Oji, guys, honestly. By Akweke Emezi. And this one was uh, long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2019. Um, they are also a Nigerian author. And Emezi's surreal prose shines extraordinary. And this is what Yabomani Adebayo had to say in The Guardian about this book. Um, Ada has always been unusual. Her parents prayed her into existence, but something must have gone away. Their troubled child begins to develop separate cells and is prone to fits of anger and grief. When Ada grows up and heads to college in America, a traumatic event crystallizes the cells into something more powerful. As she fades into the background of her own mind, these altars now protective, now hedonistic, take control, shifting her life in a dangerous direction. The stylist said, unlike anything else you'll read, and an incredible feat of storytelling. And it was also long listed for the Welcome Book Prize for 2019. So I do understand that she's got, no, not she, they, they've got a sort of memoir type of book that's recently come out i'll put it on the screen okay i can't remember anything today so i'll put it on the screen but um their work is really quite captivating and intriguing and like i said after reading vivek i was sold so i am collecting some of their work i know that they have a ya novel called pet so that's the next one to add to my collection and then i'll look into this memoir that i'm talking about as well but i look forward to this one so the other book that i got from mongani is this I'm probably the only person under this planet, under the sun, who has not read Titi Dangaremba's Nervous Conditions. This is a Zimbabwean author. This book is as old as, old as I want to say as time, but a lot of people have read it and I see that she's got a sequel out. I had not known that this was, initially I had not known that this was part of a series. It says it was first, first published in 1988 and here at the back we've got people talking about um the book and giving it a claim but for those of us who have never read the book i don't think we are given we are not worthy we are not worthy of a synopsis because we 
jokes we're not losers but we are losers in the sense that we have not read this book and clearly like i'm saying 1988 they just thought ah well they do not deserve to know what the book is about because that's all i get for rambling but all in all nervous conditions by this is a ramba zimbabwean zimbabwean author does not have a synopsis and i do apologize because i also don't know what to tell you guys okay okay so that's that on that okay okay that brings us to our last book of this haul and this is the gilded ones by namana what namana namana namina fauna and i've been eyeing this one since it came out i picked up a copy through take a lot it was on sale a few weeks ago and listen i had to grab it and this one is the exclusive african edition um the pages are kind of sprayed but i don't think that is the the kind of spray that came i want to say that the special editions had like a gold spray on the pages but i don't know i could be tech but if you do know anything about me you'll know that i absolutely love ya and especially ya of what it seems like this nature is i absolutely love the idea of fiction that creates um worlds unlike ours and 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 just creates the conflicts the drama within those worlds like give me that any day so um it says outcasts by blood warriors by choice the gilded ones we are girls or are we demons are we going to die or are we going to survive in this bold and immersive fantasy a young heroine fights to save a world that would dare tame her and discovers she is her own fiercest weapon there's nothing else that they actually needed to say absolutely that's it at the back and that's it is enough to sell you on this book i am absolutely ready so this is one of the book club um asanya book club picks for this year so i might delve into it sooner than i should but i ain't complaining i am not complaining um it does have a warning it says contains material that some readers might find distressing and apparently the cover art is by johnny tarajosu um, i don't know guys but that is beautiful well done to him or her john is obviously a, a man's name i don't know why i said her oh they do tell more i wish they hadn't but i will read you the more that is in here Dega lives in fear of the blood ceremony that might determine whether she can become a member of her village if she bleeds red she will belong but on the day of the ceremony her blood runs gold the color of impurity of a demon the consequences force Dega to leave her village with a mysterious woman destined to join an army of girls like her the alaki girls who are near immortals with rare gifts and the only ones able to destroy the empire's greatest threat but as the journey to the capital to train but as she journeys to the capital to train for the battle of her life, Dega discovers the great walled city holds many surprises. Nothing and no one quite... Oh, nothing and no one are quite what they seem. Not even Dega herself. Ooh. Okay. Let me not drag this any further. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. And if you haven't yet joined the family, please know that we would love to have you on here. Just press that red subscribe button down below, the bell next to it to be notified every single time I upload, which is usually two to three times a week. And uh, until next time, I really love you very much for choosing me and for spending time with me. Bye now. Oh, and don't forget to like liking does a lot for the channel so please do press that thumbs up and until next time i really do love you guys bye now